I've talked to uh, Daniel Levitin on the show, and then yes. also Steven Pinker. And w- when I talked to Daniel Levitin, I asked him about the evolution of music, and he mentioned this famous debate that he had with Steven Pinker, where Daniel thinks that music is an evolved faculty, and I think Steve thinks it's uh, a spandrel, so to speak. And I'm wondering where you weigh in on this debate. Well, it's, of course, it's a culturally evolved phenomenon. Um, and cultural evolution is Darwinian, too. And uh, tunes are memes. They're great examples of memes. Songs are memes. Symphonies are memes. Dawkins' term applies to them. They have their own fitness, and they depend on reproduction to be prolonged. Uh, it's not the quality of the paper or the ink <laughs> and the copies of, of uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony that explains why it's still extant today. It's that people keep wanting to play it. And so each playing of uh, Beethoven's Ninth is, uh, is another replication of that wonderful uh, set of memes. And so music, of course it's evolved. Um, but we can break that down into, really in, into two parts uh, where the boundaries don't matter much, actually. That is, there's the cultural transmission and mutation and adaptation of music. And then there's the slower genetic response to that. <laughs> Just as our brains our brains and not the brains of chimpanzees have evolved to be good language processors, good word processors, in effect. Um, our brains have evolved to be good music processors, too. Now there's some interesting evidence that some animals, as it were, appreciate music to some degree. And so that's plausible. Uh, nothing counterintuitive about that. Uh, The brain has lots of dimensions and lots of rhythms and uh, tunings, and that some tunings would be pleasurable, would would be uh, uh, rewarding to other minds, to other brains, is quite likely. But in our case, of course, it has been refined and refined and elaborated and extrapolated, multiplied many folds.